and welcome back to part number two of the Nissan Patrol revival. So since the last episode, we actually had to send the car to a garage because the computer that they had sold me wasn't working. Uh, so they put in a few other ones and found one that worked. Um, they also then painted the hood and front bumper because those had to be done for Arte in order for it to pass. Uh, and then when I went to collect, collect it, it uh, the clutch actually failed. I believe it was <clears throat> this line, which on some points is quite cracked open, uh, which is the connection between the master cylinder for the clutch and the slave cylinder, which is connected at the bottom to the clutch fork. Um, <clears throat> we lost all hydraulic pressure and it was almost impossible to push the clutch in. Uh, so we then also ordered a replacement clutch booster, which we're gonna install just to make sure that we have a nice, soft and smooth clutch engagement. So what we're gonna start off with, so what we're gonna start off with is just reinstall the new components. Uh, we still have to wait for the other half of this line because this is actually from a 4.2 um, liter Nissan Patrol, which someone gets jankily put in. Uh, so we're gonna wait for the actual components, which are coming this evening. So now we'll just install slave cylinder back down next to the clutch and place the booster and this put on the mask. where cylinder. the slave cylinder sits. And it basically pushes up against this fork, which in turn disengages the clutch. You can see inside here that this car does not have a stock clutch and it is actually, um, what was the name of it? So new slave cylinders installed. It was a lot more difficult than I thought. Um, so getting the pressure off the fork in order to realign the two bolt holes was quite difficult. So I had to use a crowbar to lever it off and take some pressure off in order to get the bolts in and tighten them. So that with one person was very difficult. Install the slave cylinder below. Now go ahead and replace the booster. Get the old one uninstalled. Um, so that basically is just one pin that goes through the clutch pedal and then four nuts on the inside. And we should be able to, hopefully there's enough space, get this out of this gap. I removed these plastics. And here we have our backside backing plate for the clutch booster. So those are four 12 meter bolt, millimeter bolts on each side. And then there's a pin that sticks through that, which I just pulled out and it dropped somewhere. Um, and once all that's removed, the clutch booster should be able to push out the front. In a classic rush job fashion, uh, out of the four booster bolts that hold the, the booster to the car, um, they actually only installed three. So the one that's really hard to get to, which we can't even see is at the top left. And they just left that nut somewhere else, I guess. So this is the pin that holds the pedal to the booster. It's relatively easy to come out. So now that we've opened it all up, we should be able to wiggle it free from the front here. There we go. So don't forget to remove the vacuum hose that is also attached to the booster. And now we should be able to just squeeze it out. There we go. That is the old one. Kind of torn up. Now that we have the old and the new next to each other, you want to make sure that the shaft length that connects to the clutch pedal uh, is set the same just in case that has been preset uh, so we'll just make sure that we get the same sort of engagement as we now we slide the new one back in make sure it's lining up with the correct holes and now tighten up the three nuts on the inside put the pin back through for the clutch pedal and we should be good. Now we reinstall 
our new master cylinder, which is as simple as just sliding it onto the existing studs, putting the nuts back on, and then we'll wait for our hydraulic line that goes from the master cylinder down to the sleeve cylinder connection pipe, which is somewhere there. We have our remaining piece of the puzzle, which is the connector uh, between the master cylinder and the slave cylinder. So we're gonna plumb that in, fill in some fluid and start breathing the clutch. So we got the hydraulic line installed. Um, that was a bit of wiggling here and there. Uh, it took some time. Uh, our next issue was that while we were trying to bleed the clutch, this slave cylinder pin uh, seemed to have been too long, which took <laughs> a lot longer to figure out than I thought until I popped this off, this end cap, because I thought there might be some adjustment for the pin, which there isn't. And for the old pin, they basically shaved off the top or shaved off maybe like a centimeter uh, because of the aftermarket clutch. And I guess the fork has a different angle, more aggressive angle. So with this OEM pin installed, the clutch was basically disengaged the whole time. Um, but yeah, so then went about bleeding it, which, so going about bleeding it, excuse the missing interior components, they've gone to the upholstery shop. You'd want to pump the clutch a couple of times, hold it, crack open this bleeder nipple uh, at the bottom, keep it open, keep it open. You'll have your foot still on the clutch. Uh, initially, air should just be coming out. And then after you do this a couple of times, uh, you will start getting fluid. So with the clutch still closed, press, sorry, crack this open, leave it open for a couple of seconds, close it again, remove your foot from the clutch and pump it again, hold it, Crack open the bleeder, let the air and fluid come out, close it, foot off the clutch. Now it took some time initially to get the fluid pumping through the system because all the components are new. So what we did was, if you slip your foot off the clutch, which I don't want to do now because it's a bit like that, it basically creates a sort of suction vacuum, I guess. It worked, uh, so I did that a couple of times, and then the fluid did actually start coming out bottom. So while you're doing this, do make sure that you keep your clutch fluid topped up because it will be emptying out the bottom. Uh, so just keep refilling it until you have no more air coming out the bottom, and it's just fluid. So that's the new hydraulic line, which was plumbed in there. Very difficult to get to but and now she works.